it's actually edifying to the believers, right? So this is, let me just say, uh, let me just bid a shalom, which means peace unto you, shalom. Give me one moment. I learned in school. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna light these up, just so you, just so you. Uh -huh. That the Mexicans uh -huh. uh, were born from the Native American Indians and what I call the Spaniards or the uh, people from Spain in Europe. They came over uh -huh. and when they got together, mm -hmm. they were about the Mexicans. That's what I so. So now, now I'll go ahead and grab you a quick precept. Now that goes into different forms again of, of slavery, right? Different forms of slavery, captivity that our people were under. However, our people were to come into different parts, you know, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, right? And you also have, um, you also have, like you said, the Spaniards. So not everyone who's, who, who would be considered a so-called Mexican, a so-called Latino from different areas of the world actually go back to Jacob. Right, because they're mingled, like you said, the Spaniards and other yeah. nations that come and mingled amongst those people, right? So, mm -hmm. nevertheless, it's all about now with that, you can test, try the spirit, as the scriptures say to do, right? Yeah, we try the spirit and, and see whether it is a you know, we, that's what we're commanded to do. Okay, so let me go into the book of uh, sec, ex, Second Ezra. This is in the Apocrypha, right? Okay, so the continue on uh, the continuation of the book of Ezra, which is in the Old Testament. This is second Ezra, right? So Ezra, Ezra was a Levite priest, right? From the Levitical priesthood. He was on the tribe of Levi. Okay, so which would be the modern day so-called Haitians, right? For the majority of it, right? So uh, this is the book of second Ezra, chapter 13. And I'll start at verse 40, where it says, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salamanser, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them over the waters and so came they into another land but they took counsel they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt right so a quote-unquote new land right yes okay so who the world calls christopher columbus right whose true name was cristobal Colon, right he was uh, given the the approval and whatnot funded and so on right, by, the, by the Spanish, right? Okay, and really going back to Amalek and whatnot, right? And, and so those individuals, right, had, had had them sent over and what the, he conquered the Taino people, what's known as Taino Indians, right? The Western part, the indigenous people here in the Western hemisphere, you know, ultimately came back. But if there's actually accounts, okay, if you can read, you can, you know, there's a book called uh, Origins of the, of the American Indians, right? I believe it's by an author named Lee Huddleston, if I'm not mistaken. Right, and that that gives account into how they brought Spanish interpreters, I'm sorry, Hebrew interpreters. So when Cristobal Colon came over to this part of the world, he actually brought Hebrew interpreters with them. Why? Because he knew that the Hebrew Israelites were here. Right? They knew that it was biblical prophecy. Really? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah, yeah. In fact, here, let me uh, just for edification. Right, right. And again, once again, shalom, shalom to those who may be on the comment board. I just, you know what I mean. And what's your name, by the way? Tammy. Tammy, I'm Tammy. Nathan, like like Nathan, but Nathan. Yes. Okay, nice so we got you. Tammy here, right? She's a believer. Just might be uh, very well from the tribe of Gad. Okay, so yeah, we're we're. You know, I'm looking uh -huh. here. Uh huh. You know, and I know Argentina is. Uh, they're like. Aren't they from like a mix of Chile and Italian? So is Arge that correct? So Argentina, I mean, there's. There's different tribes, I mean, uh, even different nations, of course, that have settled in those lands over time. Like, for instance, when you have, uh, after post-World War II, right, yeah. you had a lot of Germans, you know, uh, quote-unquote yeah. Nazis, that actually ended up uh, migrating, if you will, uh, you know, seeking safe haven, right, yeah. for lack of better terms, in, in Argentina, right? So there's there's many different nations that, that have, that have just, settled in those this lands, This is right? amazing seeing this because I have three different nationalities that I know are in my blood. Okay. You know? Got you. Okay. So and, and, it, it, uh, and, this and is kind of amazing to look and, at. And it's all, it, and she's referring to the sign. So Tammy is referring to the 12 tribe sign, right? Which is beautiful. And uh, big up, big ups to the brother Tahoam Lab for the sign, the water for you, Malak, the water of Yabashi Shai, right? So yeah. this right here, I'm going to show you this right here. This is called the Las Lunas Decalogue Stone, which is now in New Mexico, formerly Mexico, right? Okay. So that is a broken, 
form of Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, right? That is that is Paleo Hebrew, right? Because there were different forms of it. They there were more or less uh, broken broken forms of it. I mean, does it say when they uh, found it? As far as when it was when it was actually discovered, I can look further into the history of it, you know. But the point being is that, is that that was written long ago, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when it was actually discovered. Okay, so it says the first recorded mention of the stone was in 1933, right? Yeah. So the point being is is this, that was a, for, a form of ancient Paleo Hebrew, right? Yeah. So our people had to be here, right? Our yeah. people here. Or if you've heard of the Back Creek Stone and other artifacts, the, the Back Creek Stone was found, I believe, in Tennessee, right? So that also had a broken form of Paleo Hebrew, yeah. right? So our people uh, have uh, have. Uh, heritages and customs that go back to the ancient Israelites, right? Yeah. So we fit the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, right? We have many, many different accounts and even our languages, right? You know, so many different accounts uh, and secular history and, and biblical prophecy goes to show that these people are the, uh, the people of the of the book, of the, of the scriptures, the most highest chosen people. Yeah. Right? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This gets me kind of curious, you know, because I've I've thought about checking into my ancestry. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? and, and so, and so what's really, what's really good is to check into the lineage of your father, right? Uh huh. Okay. And I'm gonna just bid a shalom. I'm gonna say hello and greet greet the individuals on the comment board. Brother Hawashaya, Yabashim Shah Brakata, Wabrakatam to you in your household, Shalom. Chabag Shana, Yabashim Shah Brakata, Brakatam to you in your household, Shalom. Shalom, brother Mayaka Allah, Yabashim Shah Brakata, Wabrakatam to you in your household, and Shalom to any brothers and sisters that may stop by, may tune in. Lord's will, this is edifying. And uh, so again, I'm speaking with uh, Tammy here, and uh, Tammy came by, saw the sign, you know, and, uh, and Lord's will, she may be of the tribe of, of Gad, right, or or any other uh, of the Israelite tribes, but it may likely be that she is from the tribe of Gad, right? So it's beautiful. That's why we come out here to comfort, to edify our people. Hey, speak of the angel. Shalom, brother Tahuam Lab. Ya Bashim Al Shabrakata, or Bakatam to you in your household. Again, uh, uh, Sister Tammy here just may very well be of the tribe of Gad, and what drew her was the sign. So Tawari Ya Bashim Al Shaf, you brother. All right, Tahuam Lab for the sign, bro. Much appreciated, and that's why we're out here to teach and, and, and comfort our people, right? You know, as the scriptures yes. say, comfort ye uh, one another with these words, right? Yes. Absolutely. That so. kind of keeps it very simple right there. The tribe of Gad. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and it, yeah, yes, ma'am. And, yeah. and it does help because, again, all these, so many different tribes of so-called Native Americans, yet yeah. they, they could very well be, the majority of them are, are from the lineage of Gad, going back to our forefather, uh, going back to our forefather, Jacob, because the, the Most High's promise goes through Abraham, then Isaac, and then... The, tw uh, the twin sons that Isaac had, right? He had twin sons, Esau and, J and Jacob. The promise was given unto Jacob, right? And so that's, and that's who the world calls Jesus Christ, right? His true name is Yahweh Shai, right? The lineage from Jacob, okay? That is, uh, ultimately came through the line of that, came through the line of Judah, which would be the so-called Negroes, right? The so-called American blacks, right? Okay, so that's, that's, so when he returns, right? Book of Revelation speaks of that dark skin, dark skin like under under burnt brass and white woolly hair, right? Yeah. So that's that's who's coming back to to conquer, you know, ultimately obtain, you know, and have everything under Imagine his foot. That. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It's gonna be beautiful, right? Uh. So just know that that this place, you know what I mean, it's about to fade away. This place is is about yeah. to change dramatically, well, I've been right? Watching it. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. You know? So I really am. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, keep believing in, like I said, call on the true names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those are the true names to call on for salvation, right? Yeah. That's that's who we call on. In fact, here, let me go ahead and give you a give you a quick preset from the Book of Acts. Okay, let's go into this from the Book of Acts. And the fourth act. This is the Book of Acts, chapter four, verse twelve. I'm sorry if that smoke's bothering you. No, yeah, it's just, not the smoke. Hey, Shalom, peace out to you, Shalom. Yeah, that's the spirit. That's yes, the spirit. <laughs> I love the incense. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So this is the book of uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Right? So that is the omen omen as well, right? He is salvation. He delivers, right? He's coming to deliver the remnant, the elect of his people. And then ultimately the entirety of the biblical nation of Israel, Yasha Allah. Right? So that's how it's pronounced in the Paleo Hebrew tongue. Yashar Allah. Sha Yashar Allah means, Ya means he, Shar means prince, and Allah means power. Right? So he, prince of the power. He is a prince of the power, right? 
And so that is uh, going back to the book of Genesis as well, right? When our forefather Jacob wrestled with the angel, right, to obtain uh, to obtain the promise, right? Yeah. You know, that's. Uh, or I should say, it was already written a four time. You know, it was already written. But when he says that, he says, uh, you know, like a, uh, you know, let me just grab the account in fact. Let me just grab this account. Just give me a moment here. Wow, it's lock it. One moment, folks. One moment. Yeah, just grabbing a preset for. It's just the Tam you say it was Tammy, correct? Let me make yes. sure. Tam okay, I just want to make sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, the, yep. So let's go ahead and get this account out of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. It's locked it. Okay, so I'll get this out of Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24. I'll start here. It says, and Jacob, so again, whose name was changed to Israel, right? And I'll go into this, right? And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And this man was actually a, a holy angel, right? So continuing on, it says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Right, so he touched him merely, and with that, that, that celestial power, right, the celestial body, okay, the spiritual power, he was able to cause that injury to Jacob, right? So continuing on, it says, and he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. The angel said that to Jacob. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And that goes back to the Paleo-Hebrew, Yaquab. Yaquab means supplanter, right? supplanter so ultimately he's going to supplant his twin brother okay so continuing on it says and he said thy name shall be called no more jacob but israel so again yasha allah right where it says for as a prince hast thou power with god right so again yah yah meaning he shah meaning prince and and, and uh, yasha allah and allah means power right so the term god also that means power right going back to it so when people say hear Allah, they may think of, oh, okay, that's the Muslim God that people, you know, quote unquote Muslim uh, idol, if you will, or the name that they pray I, to, right? My father say Allah one time. Uh -huh. And I never uh -huh. asked him what it meant. Yeah. I was assuming uh -huh. something completely wrong. Mm -hmm. In a way, uh -huh. I was assuming he was using Allah as a name for God. Okay. But the definition... Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, absolutely. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, so, yeah. so Allah, yeah, it derives yeah. from the term power, right? That's what yeah. it means, power, yeah. right? So again, so as it says, right, Yahshua Allah, so he prints of the power, right? And so again, yeah. in uh, Genesis 32 and 28, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed, right? So he had ultimately prevailed during that wrestling match, right? And so ultimately he says, okay, now your name's going to be called he prince of the power right you're yeah. prince of god so it says and um no that's pretty much that's pretty much the point there so yeah. that's that's where the name derives from right so when they say israel israel is a people before it was a place right yeah. so we deriving from the seed line of our forefather jacob whose name was changed to israel right we are a people before it was a place right so the state of israel right now okay the holy land was was more than just what the state is now Right, okay, but ultimately the kingdom of heaven will be established. The kingdom will, will reign not only here on earth, that's where it's going to start, the, res the restoration of the earth, right? But also, if your spirit can receive it, right, it coincides with the destruction of America, right? So actually, yeah, so many, many scriptures go into that, many books and, and parables go into the destruction of America, right? The, have you ever heard of uh, the virgin daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great? Yeah, I think I have. The lake of fire that the Bible speaks yeah, of, I Revelation? Think Babylon. No, I don't believe I've heard that Babylon is the name of the So Babylon is referred to as the, the mother of harlots, right? Babylon derives from the term Babal, which means confusion through mixture, right? 
So confusion through mixture, what is America known as, right? The great melting pot, right? All these different natures, cultures, you could be anything you want to be, right? They're pushing all this uh, narrative, uh, this agenda to, you know, me and regarding, you know, homosexuality and, and transgender, and they're, they're pushing a lot of narratives, right? So ultimately, um, all these different things, right? They go against the scriptures, right? So, and, and all the other things as well, and the influence that America, AKA Babylon the Great, many other names that it goes by on the Bible, right? Tyrus, Idumia, Basra, right? You know, uh, Mount Seir, right? So Mount Petra, right? So many different names that the Bible speaks of America, but again, the kingdom of heaven being established must, uh, that, what has to happen first is America being destroyed, right? By hypersonic and thermonuclear missiles, all right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so, so yeah. When you continue to call on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and those are the names to call on for salvation. And if you be of the elect remnant, right, the hopeful elect, as we say, right, the one-third, right, spoken of in the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, right, the one-third, the innumerable multitude that shall be saved, right? That is who's going to be saved, okay? And the 144,000, right, 12,000 men out of each tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. So 12,000 each, 12 tribes, that's 144,000. Right. So here, let me grab you this, and uh, I'm gonna check the board real quick before I continue. I just want to make sure that I'm uh, acknowledging any. Okay, yeah, yeah, con, con, yeah, at the water, brother, at the water. Con. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this out of uh, Revelation chapter seven. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Uh, woo! Okay, if you don't mind, if you have a minute, I can get to, I'll start it from the top if you have a moment. Okay. So, oh, this is Revelation 7 and 1. It says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, or we say the living power, right? Again, God being Allah, which is power, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, and, the, and cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God, our power, in their foreheads. Right? And that term uh, goes back to uh, that seal, right? It's really going back to like a mark, right? Uh, what's yeah. referred to in the, in the uh, I believe it's the book of Ezekiel, right? Where, where it says uh, the, uh, what's called the mark is, is a thawa. In the Paleo-Hebrew, it's thawa. And that means it's a mark of exemption from judgment. And the term judgment, right? A judgment is a, is a judgment of the Lord and ultimately a punishment, right? There's different there's different uses of it, right? Judgment could also mean justice, right? Yeah. Okay, according That's to the word. That's what I normally think of it. And I know, like, you know, it even says in the Bible, I can't say the first, I'm not sure what uh -huh. it is. Uh -huh. I know I've read it, but, you know, to judge. Uh, oh, judge. You know? Yeah, it judge so it not. It gets a little confusing for me. It, it, it can be, absolutely. because And that's the importance yeah. of having a teacher to break it down, right? Yeah. And that's also spoken of in the scriptures as well, right? Yeah. When Philip had spoken with the uh, uh, Ethiopian, right, yeah. who was reading the book of Isaiah, and he says, Understand what thou readest? And he says, How can I unless a man teach me? So we all need teachers to help us break it down and yes. understand it. So that, um, that is speak because there's actually a book in the, in the Old Testament, Judges. Right, yeah. so, so we are to have judges and be able to judge matters yeah. according to the law, statutes, and commandments, according to the will of our power. Yeah. So it, it can be a little, you know, confusing, if you will, if you don't have the correct understanding that the teachers, but ultimately if the spirit. Yeah. All understanding is given through the spirit, the Holy Spirit, right? Definitely. Okay, Definitely. So, let me, so let me go back, and this is what, now what Revelation 7 is speaking of, is speaking of the destruction, right, that is ultimately gonna come to America and different parts of the world as well, right? So they're saying, okay, yeah, hold. So, so ultimately, the last form of it, right? Before the kingdom of heaven is established, the great destruction, the return of our Lord and Savior, and the holy angels, and ultimately that last, the, the, the triumphing uh, of our Lord yeah. and Savior and the holy angels through the power of the Lord, right? The heavenly Father. And so I'm going to continue on. Now it says, verse 4, Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and them and there were sealed 144... 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, right? So again, all the tribes of the children of Israel, all 12, right? So it goes, it continues on, right? And so it names all the 12 tribes and it says all of them seal 12,000. 
Now that's speaking of 12,000 men, right? Which are gonna make up what's called the House of David. 144,000, they're gonna be the governing body in the kingdom of heaven underneath King David. So there's a divine order, right? The heavenly father, okay? Through the powers of the heavenly father at the very top, then his only begotten son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, true name Yahweh Shach, right? And then is King David. Okay, King David right below Yahweh Shai, okay, or if you say Hamashiach, that means Christ. That Christ derives from Hamashiach or Mashiach. So Mashiach means anointed one. Or if we say, or if you say Hamashiach, that means the anointed one. Ha means the. So if you say Hamashiach, that means the anointed one, right? So there would be ultimately the, uh, the governing body underneath that, right? So the divine order, the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, King David the body that is the house of David, 144,000, right? So now I'm gonna to get to the point where, I, which I mentioned, this is Revelation chapter seven and verse nine. It says, after this, so after witnessing the, the 12,000s from each tribe, 144,000, it says, after this, I beheld and lo, L-O, which means look, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the lamb and the lamb is our lord and savior right the lamb without spot the lamb without blemish that's who the world calls jesus christ the true name is yahweh shai right and then when it says all people that's because our people are scattered right so we speak different languages right yes. okay we're all scattered abroad across the four winds of the earth now continuing on it says and tongues and stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes right the term white actually means spiritual purity Right, so there's no such thing as a so-called white man. There's no such thing as so-called black man. I imagine that, yeah. Those, those are all proverbs and bywords. Yeah. Those are social constructs, right? So it says again, so clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And a palm is representing victory, right? Yeah. It represents victory, overcoming, overcoming everything, uh, the beast system, right? And that's a whole different teaching. But I would say overcoming the, the affliction, the oppression, and overcoming the wickedness, the temptation, right? And so it says right here in verse uh, verse 10. And cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our power, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Right, again, salvation, okay, to our power, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Right, Hamashiach Yahweh is going to inherit all things. All things will be subdued under his foot, his footstool, right? In fact, this is uh, just to back that up real quick. Let me grab Psalm chapter 110. And our Lord and Savior spoke of this as well, but this is the account where he's actually speaking of. Right? This is Psalm 110 and verse 1, where it says, The Lord said unto my Lord. So when it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, this is uh, King David saying, Okay, this is the Heavenly Father speaking unto my Lord. Right? Yeah. So he would actually, Hamashiach Yahushai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, came from the line of David, right? From the tribe of Judah. Right? So continuing on, it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, and the right the right side represents righteousness. The left represents wickedness, right? So the right hand, that's why he's sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. I see. Right? So it says, uh, Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? So all of the Lord's enemies, all these other biblical nations, again, 18 biblical nations, 17 of them are going into slavery. Right? And after that, after a thousand years of slavery, Edom, okay, the Edomites, the so self-proclaimed so-called white man that goes back to the lineage of Edom, okay, they're going to be wiped off the, that's it, they're going to be eradicated, they're going to be done for, that's it. So, they're, right? yes ma'am, they're, wow. they're going to be the only nation that does not receive uh, mercy as far as being able to continue on in the kingdom of heaven. They're the only nation that are going to be wiped out forever, right? So, after, after so the other nations, they're going to be placed into their uh, appointed lands. And they're going to be tributary, right? So, so they're going to be able to sustain, if you will, they're going to have to follow the law, statutes, and commandments. They're going to be governed, right? But they're going to be tributes, okay? They're going to be tributary. So whether it be, you know, uh, you know, I, and I, I hate to, you know, I don't mean to sound vulgar, or, or but this is what the Bible yeah. teaches, the Bible yeah. speaks of, this will happen. So, you know, there are women being uh, made concubines and whatnot, or also um, them giving up resources, right? Whether it be natural resources, different types of uh, food resources, uh, wood, you know, a different yeah. metal, precious metals, right? So on and so forth. So they're ultimately going to be made servants in the kingdom of heaven, right? So if the Lord wills it, if, if you are of the tribe of Israel, right? Lord, will that be the case? And, 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 and trying to spirit, you know, I believe that may very well be the case. 
then the Heavenly Father is, is going to grant you that celestial body, everlasting immortality, and also you will actually be in that rulership position in the sense of you having slaves, you having servants, right? So you're going to be actually, you're going to be made righteous all, you're going to have over 600 law, statutes, and commandments written in your inward parts, right? You're never going to be able to sin, ever. Our people will yeah, never, I, our people will know, never be able to like, sin. I catch myself, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I get lost in it and I mm -hmm. don't even realize that even sometimes people have to say something to me, uh -huh. you know? Absolutely. But I catch myself in it as well. Mm -hmm. But then I recall a book that I read, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. that said that, because uh, my huge thing, my huge thing uh -huh. is being vulgar. Okay. You know, when I'm upset. Uh -huh. And the more stressed out I get, the uh -huh. more vulgar. Gotcha. And I did read a book that was written, uh, you know, from the of the Bible. Okay, absolutely. It was the author themselves, uh -huh. but it did state that I will never be able to take my time. Gotcha. Uh, you know? it's, and it's like, gotcha. I sit there and I go, okay, so. No. You know what I mean? Uh, I understand. Because especially out of a female. I understand. You know, I sometimes my mouth sounds like I'm a truck driver. I, I understand. You know? yeah, as they say, or I, I've been in the past, you know, I, I used to. Have that same type of uh, lack of restraint, if you will, you know, and, and the lack of what, what's uh, referred to in the scriptures is, is temperance. Temperance goes into control of your spirit, right? So having rule over your spirit, okay? So the Bible speaks to that, and it says, uh, just paraphrasing, it says, he who has not rule over his own spirit is like a city broken uh, without walls, right? So ultimately, yes. uh, now, but going back into that, let me just uh, grab this for you real quick. This is 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians verse uh, 11 and verse 6. It says, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been made thoroughly manifest among you in all things, right? So the Heavenly Father is manifesting these things, these works. But the point being there is, is but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. So some people like, for instance, myself, right? I may, I may uh, here and there, may utter a, what's called a profanity, right? Okay, but that's not the same thing as a quote unquote curse word. See, a curse is something when you're actually cursing someone, right? When you're actually cursing and, and you're putting curses putting uh, uh praying for praying recently. for judgment to come upon them right so that's actually biblical right yeah, so right. our people would actually curse out occur put curses on others and the heavenly father would grant their petition right yeah there, there's a uh there's an account where the, the prophet elisha right okay uh, who was uh more or less under the prophet elijah right elisha was given a, a portion a great portion of the holy spirit after elijah was translated right afterwards there's an account where many children were uh, uh, more or less uh, throwing, cursing him, calling him names, right? Saying, calling him bald head, right? And whatnot. So they were more or less, uh, you know, they, they were more or less being, being rude. in other words, for lack of better terms, being rude, right? They're, they were acting in wickedness, right? So what he did was he, he threw curses on him. He threw curses on him and what happened immediately, <clears throat> excuse me, was I believe it was two she bears, right? Female bears came out and, and ultimately killed them. Those children that were, yeah. So, absolutely. So the Bible yeah. speaks of that, right? So it, it does talk about that, right? So now, just to kind of finish the point there, so a curse word is actually, it's more or less, it's profanity, right? It, it's yeah. vulgar, if you will, like you said, yeah. but it's not necessarily an, an actual curse according to the Bible. It's more or less yeah. just rude speech, right? Yeah. Is what the Bible speaks of, rude speech. So again, 2 Corinthians 11 and 6, right? So yeah, you know, we try our best to minimize it, you know, to have rule of our spirit. You know? you know, I, I really do. Okay. I pray, uh, you know, Every time I pray, but I do pray a lot. Absolutely. Well, because the fact that, you know, my mom is like, I understand. You know? I understand. No, absolutely. I used to, like I said, I used to. I'm more aware of it the longer I'm alive, yeah. you know? And yeah. I don't know if I, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is I don't believe, but then as bad as I am mm -hmm. now, yeah, yeah. you know, absolutely. when I was younger, but. Yeah. I understand. No, absolutely. I think that comes from age, you know? Mm -hmm. Being the, I mean, I'm not saying it's right. I'm uh -huh. just saying the longer we're alive, the more we experience, and for me, it's that much more difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. This is a. Uh... 
you know, I'll just go, I'll just get straight to the point here in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 6, and this is verse 32. So it says right there, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, but the point, the point I want to make to you, where it says, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, right? So again, the heavenly Father knows what you have need of, right? So it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High, the kingdom of God, so God can also be said and translated as the most high, right? Okay. Yes. So the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? So if you just continue to seek your salvation, call on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those are the true names, the only names to call on for salvation, right? And, and I pray that you will call on those names and that your prayers be answered, right? And, and so I pray that that be the case, that you can actually see the Heavenly Father mani manifest his power before you. Right? Yeah. Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you say Yahweh and then just add Shai at the end, S H I. So Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those are the two names to call him, right? And you do that to the best of your ability, and, and yeah. you know, and the Heavenly Father, the Lord's will, He 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 bless you in that sense, you know. So I, you know, I pray that be the case. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. But uh, you know, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna continue on, and I'm gonna check the board real quick, and. And a bit of Shalom to a servant Ariel, brother Shamgar, and brother Yewitaza, Yal Bashim Nashat Brakata, Brakatam, to you beloved brothers and your households, and a mighty Shalom to you. All right, so uh, you know, so I'll probably continue on with the lesson going into something else. You're welcome to you're welcome to stick around and hang out a little bit if you want. But I would love I'm, I'm gonna to, but I, I, okay. I really think I. I, I I mean, you know, I understand. I, would, I understand. No, I, absolutely. I, I, absolutely. 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 I, I, I understand. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I often carry uh, an extra water on me. Would you care for water? Oh, that's okay. I have some. You have some? I okay. Got you. Absolutely. Okay. So, in the ancient paleo, in, in the ancient custom of our people, right? I would say I want to uh, shake hands at the forearm. So, as opposed to shaking hands, so I would shake yours at the forearm. Okay. That, that's a that's an ancient Thank custom you. of ours. All right. All so, right. I'm gonna say shalom, which means peace unto you. Okay. And Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakata, which means in the name of the Father and the name of the Son, bless you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bless you. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, you too. All right. And, and yeah. I'm out here. I'm out here pretty often, you know, as often as the Lord allows me to be. So if I you, see. you know, so some, know. so sometimes in the evening or sometimes, yeah. you know, earlier in the day, just pending, you know, my work schedule and things yeah. as such, when the Lord wills it. And as the scriptures say, man's going to the Lord. So whenever the Lord wills it, you know, uh, you know, I'm out here teaching. So if I ever okay, see you again, you know, maybe, maybe our paths will cross again. Very cool. Thank all right. You. All right. I would love that. Yeah. All right. Well, you all take right. care. You take all right. I'm right. the Heavenly Father. Bless your evening. All right. All right. You take care. All right. Shalom. Shalom. All right. This is the brother Nathan coming out here through the Spirit, power, grace, and blessings of Adawanawa, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Let's come preach the gospel, the good news unto our people. And that's a prime example to Wadi Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Because again, man, the elect, the remnant are still being sealed. So that's our duty to come out here, you know, and again, so often as the Lord wills it. And I come out here and make our bodies for offering a living sacrifice, man. All right? So, we're for first, <laughs> hey, 30 minutes in, hey, a beautiful conversation with Sister Tammy there. And I'm going to face the East right now, giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachak, Wadash, Kol Halalim La, Laha Yanawa. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Waha Rachak, Wadash. Right? Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo Hebrew tongue, which means He is, He to be, He exists. Bahasham, meaning in the name. Of his only begotten son, Yahweh, which means he is salvation, he's the deliverer. Okay, Bahasham, Harakakwadash, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Honors be to the sincere elders, apostles, bishops, teachers of GMS Great Millstone, as well as the like minded elders throughout Yashavala. All right, and, and honors be to the brethren teaching and preaching this word in truth and sincerity, all in one accord across the four winds of the earth, risking your lives and freedoms to do so, making your bodies for offering and living sacrifice in the names of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. To all say Shalom, while Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Barakatam. All right, and uh, Brakim Tamyad, blessings always upon the hopeful like remnant, the hopeful house of David, consisting of the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Haitians, West Indians, Israelite foreigners scattered abroad, as well as the so-called Seminoles, okay, the so-called black and indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, right, okay, and, and all Israelite foreigners scattered abroad, deriving from the sea line of our forefather Jacob, making up the 12 tribes of Israel that the Bible speaks of, may you seek repentance and salvation in these latter days, may the blessing of election be upon you and your households, to the sincere hearted, a bit of mighty Shalom. And uh, you know what I mean? And that, that's the spirit, hey, spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord working, right? In a, in a major way. Brothers are on fire, right? 
token signs and the Heavenly Father is manifesting all these wondrous works and things in these latter days, man. So let's let's continue to let's continue to push forth. And uh, I'm gonna get this out in Lord's will. This lesson may be again edifying, comforting, and exhorting, right? And uh, let's grab this out of First Thess uh, Second Thessalonians, right? So that was a beautiful account, right? Okay, so let me grab this out of Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse three. That says, "We are bound to thank the Most High always for you, brethren, as it is meet." And then that term "meet" M-E-E-T goes into fitting, right? So as it is meet, uh, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Right, that charity, agape, that brotherly love, right? And, and to the brethren and the sisters, the Akim and the Akwath, right? Men, women, and children of all people, man. So that's, again, man, why do y'all buy Shemuel Shai for, for having Sister Tammy there come by the altar? And, and, hey, man, that was a very spiritual conversation, man. And, and I'll, I'll go into it more, you know, in detail. But it was a very, very beautiful, very beautiful account, man. And, and so, signs and tokens following, man, right? Someone that acknowledged us, you know what I mean? Driving by right here, so... All praise the Abba Shimei Al Shai. You know, that was earlier in the conversation. And we are giving thanks constantly, right? Again, that our faith groweth exceedingly, right? Lord's will, her faith grow. Lord's faith, all the believers continue to grow in their faith, right? You know? And so let's go, um, let's go into verse four. Shalak, it's a little dark out here, but do my thing. You know, at the Wadi Abba Shimei Al Shai. Got the tripod light working for me. So, uh, yeah, usually this light right here is on, but it's all good. Say verse, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 4. It says, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of the Most High for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, right? So enduring all these different oppression, affliction, right? Uh, persecution, right? All these trials and tribulations that our people continuously face day in and day out, especially here in Babylon, America and abroad, right? And this modern day captivity, right? Okay, that we glory of what? Uh, of the believers and, and we glory first and foremost for those things right you know and, and that's that's who we really have glory, what we have glory in as the scriptures say right you know that we know the most high in his will right and, and, and that wisdom and knowledge is a tremendous gift it is a tremendous blessing invaluable right so the wadi abashimihawashai for that right then in fact here let's grab this out of uh, let's go to second corinthians second corinthians Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 3. Yep. Now it says, I speak not to this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts and to die and to live with you. Right? So again, like to die together, to live together, ultimately we are of the body, right? Okay, of that one bread as the scriptures say. Right? So one bread, one body. Right, and, and that is again, man, to collectively making up the body of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Right, so again, that is, I'm gonna repeat that, 2 Corinthians 7 and 3. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts, right? And that goes back to the Paleo Hebrew La'ab, which means your mind, right? To die and to live with you, great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Right? So all our tribulation. Why? Because we know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is doing a mighty work. And the servant is not greater than his master, as the scriptures say. Right? So we are to endure that as well. But the Heavenly Father will make a way for us to escape, as the scriptures say. So like you're trying to minimize that shadow. All right. And Shalom, Sister Rebecca, Ofer, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Barakata, Wa Barakatam to you and your household, beloved sister. So we're going to continue on. And uh, in fact, let me go back to, uh, let me slide over to 1 Thessalonians. All right, bubble shy, one quick sec. 1 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 2. Let's start at 13. Now it says, for this cause also we thank the Most High without ceasing. Right, so constantly praying, constantly giving thanks to Yahweh Bashim El Shai. For what, man? For the day, for the opportunity to praise his holy name and that of his only begotten son. Right, continue on. Because when ye received the word of the Most High, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of the Most High, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 
right? So again, you have to have belief, right? You have to have that belief, man. Again, believing that it's the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, right? Some folks may say, oh, that that the Bible was written of men, right? Or or for whatever reasons they, they as the scriptures all say, oh, not all men have faith, right? So continuing on in verse verse 14. It says, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of the Most High, which in Judea are in Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. For ye also have suffered like things for of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Right? The, the biblical, the, the real Jews, right? Okay? Those are speaking of predominantly the uh, of the southern kingdom, right? Who were known as Jews in the ancient world at that time, right? So not the so-called, you know what I mean, uh, ish people, right? Not the little hats, okay? No, we're talking about the real Jews, okay? Of the southern kingdom of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So, they're again suffering those things, right? Okay, not only of the other nations, but at the hands of our own people as well, right? Amashiach Yahweh Shai, also suffering that persecution and affliction, right? <laughs> That's the spirit. Yeah, I got a, got a dog over here trying to peek his head out the window, trying to hear the word. That's beautiful, man. As the scriptures say, right? Creature uh, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of, of God. Going back into it again in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 15. Who both killed the Lord, Ha'adawan, uh, Yahweh Shai, and their own prophets. And they persecuted us, and they pleased not the Most High, and are contrary to all men. That's right, man. So all men. Okay. And, and that is ultimately speaking of as well is, is uh, the Israelite men, right? Israelite, the, the sincere hearted believers, right? So again, yeah, they, they were guilty of that, man. They were guilty of persecuting, killing the prophets, right? Not pleasing the Most High. Verse 16, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Shatan, Satan, hindered us. For what is our hope and joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not ye, Eslakia, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord, Adawanawa, Yahusha, Mashiach, at his coming? Right? Those are rhetorical questions, because of course they will be. It says, for ye are the glory and joy. Woo! That's right, man. So we are glorying in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And, and for what, man? For allowing us to come into this marvelous light, to come preach the gospel, the good news unto our people. Okay, and, and ultimately what? To help to uh, uh, help to seal the remnant of the elect, Lord's will, right? You know, and, and help to those be converted, man. Okay, to come out of the ways of wickedness, to come out of the ways of the world and be reborn, right? Okay, and that's what? Pursuant to Psalm 119 and 9, right? Okay, taking heed to the word, right? That is how we are truly born, washed by the word, right? Check the board. And look like brother servant Ariel got a, uh, okay, it's locked here for that. Yeah, let's grab uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 6 from brother Ariel Yasharala. Now it says, I have planted Apollo's waters, uh, watered, but the most high gave the increase. That's right. So again, the heavenly father, right, is using the vessels, right? Using men, his mouthpiece, right? The prophets, going back to the ancient world as well, right? To go out there and, and Lord's will to plant that seed, right? Continue, and, and again, the heavenly father is going to give the increase, right? It is not of us. It is of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Isaiah 55 and 11, brother Ariel, it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. That's right. And this word is prospering. It's flourishing all throughout the earth, man. All throughout, across the four winds of the earth, man. It is flourishing. It is ever, ever apparent that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is performing these works, right? The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that, right? Yep, and that includes the judgment as well. You know, I had a woman stop by right before I, I hit the live, and she was talking about, uh, you know, she may very well be an Israelite as well, right, from the tribe of Asher, right? We, were, we, were, we had a quick dialogue for a few minutes, and, and she was talking about having compassion for what's taking place over there with, with the so-called Pal Palestinians and whatnot, right, with the conflict in the Gaza Strip, quote-unquote. But, uh, you know, I was, I was speaking of the scriptures as well, certain points that she was making and she was acknowledging it and saying, okay, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, that's true. You know what? That it's the Lord's will. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, I understand that. So, but the point being is, um, Salakia, I lost my train of thought there for a sec. 
All right. But yeah, exactly. So that's prospering. But that was the point I was trying to make to her. It's biblical prophecy being fulfilled. Those things have to take place in order for the kingdom to be, to be established. It's all part of the script. Right? Let's grab this out of uh, Proverbs 30 and 5, Brother Ariel. It says, Every word of the Most High is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. That's right. Putting that trust, man, right? You have to trust in the Spirit. Trust in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Right? In fact, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this. Bubba Gashai, give me one quick sec. One quick sec, Bubba Gashai. Okay, I'm gonna hold that, scrap this through the spirit. Go over, slide over to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Right? Yep. Wisdom of Solomon, one and one. It says, Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Who are the judges of the earth? That's speaking of the Israelites. It says, Think of our one Yahweh, the Lord, with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek him. Verse 2. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. That's right, man. So again, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 2. For he will be found of them that tempt him not. So you are commanded not to tempt your power, right? Tempt your God. And he showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. Right, so coming into this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, having that hedge of protection, that's going to come by, by having what? Trust. Having faith in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, man. Trusting that, the, hey, man, everything that's going to take place, it's all for the betterment of the remnant, the elect. Right? It's all for the betterment of the kingdom of Yasharala, of Yahweh, the kingdom of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Right? It's like it. Yeah, yeah. So, again, man, we have to continue to trust in our power, right? And, hey, man, you can never fail in doing that, right? You know, whatever the Heavenly Father is going to put before you, right? It's it's all part of uh, that that uh, increase as far as, you know, continuing to trust in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Your trials, your tribulations, right? Heavenly Father is going to make a way for you to escape those things, right? So let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. Yep, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. No, you know what? No, we're good on that. We're good on that. Yeah, let's, let's go. Now let's slide back to 2 Thessalonians. Yep, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll repeat 4 just for context. Now it says, So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of the Most High for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of the Most High, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of the Most High, for which ye also suffer. Right, man. So all the things that we're taking, that we're having to deal with, right, and all this oppression, afflictions, you know, all these different types of, of, of uh, 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 what's the term? Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Ah, uh, slake. You know, there's there's a term that, that the scriptures speak of that goes into diversity, right? Or manifold. The wadi al bashim al shai, right? Manifold temptations, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yep. So again, that goes into diverse types, different types, right? Whether it be of the body, you know, financially, within the workplace, vexation of the spirit, through many different types of things, right? So we're going to be tried in different things, right? So again, but those are to do what? To count us worthy of the kingdom, right? As, a, as the saying in the world, you got to go through it to get to it, right? Well, let's go, let's slide over to the book of Philippians. All right? Philippians chapter 1 and verse 28. Now it says, Yep, Khan. It says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, which is destruction. Right? Now it says, But to you of salvation and that of the Most High, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Mashiach, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Right? So again, man, this, this is not the land of our rest, right? We are put here as a trial of our faith. Okay, go through these trials and tribulations to do what? Endure, Lord willing, right? Verse 30. Have the same conflict which ye saw in me and now here to be in me, right? But the point being, again, we are here to do what? To suffer those things, right? Endure those things for the kingdom of the Most High, right? To show ourselves worthy of that. Being a joint heir in the kingdom of heaven. I don't know if that. No, in fact, let me grab this right here. I'm going to repeat that. 
Philippians 1 and 29, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Mashiach, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. That's right, man. So we're going to prove ourselves, right? We're going to go through the Lord's will, go through the uh, furnace of affliction, the furnace of adversity, and come out pure on the other side. I don't want to have Which means Lord willing, Lord pleasing. All right, let's grab uh, one moment. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. All right? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. It's like it. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all. Out of one, the Lord delivered me. That's right, deliverance, right? That's what we're continually meditating on, praying on, right? The victory is already won. So we're going to continue to call on Yahweh Shai for that ultimate blessing, that, that salvation out of Babylon the Great, out of Babylon America, before this place is utterly burnt up, right? And verse uh, verse 12, Saki, yeah, 2 Timothy 3 and 12 it says, Yea, and in all that will live godly in Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, shall suffer persecution right so again you shall suffer you will it's not you may you might no you shall right but again it is all for your betterment man right and the deliverances through those things are to what glorify the power of Yahweh Shai, to manifest to, to magnify and exalt his holy name and that of his only begotten son right now let's slide over to the book of saint john chapter 13 Yep, yep. This is St. John chapter 13 and verse 16. Verily, verily, right, which means truly. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. That's right. So he's speaking upon that, right? Okay, hey, you are not greater than me and I am not greater than my father, right? That is what the parable is saying right there. Again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Right? So again, man, we're not greater than, than Adawan, Yahweh Mashiach, right? So we have to suffer those same things, right? We have to be uh, built up and, and fortified, if you will, in the mind and the spirit, right? Let me slide over. In fact, here, let's let's go ahead and uh, grab this out of the book of Sirach, right? Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Slide over to uh, Ecclesiastes of Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 1. It says, My son, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to make sure this light's good. My son, if thou come to serve Adawan the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right? Know that that's, that comes with the, uh, you know what I mean? That, that's par for the course, right? No, you, that's what you're standing up for, right? Verse 2, set thy heart aright. And constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Right? So those things are going to come. Trials, tribulations, persecution, affliction. All those things are going to come. But don't do what? Forsake your power. Right? Don't go diving back into the world and try to find some carnal vice. Right? Go back into uh, illicit drug use. Right? Going back into uh, slanging dope or you know what I mean? Or, or whatever other means of, of uh, fleshly pleasure there is. Right? Uh, whatever, you know what I mean? All the uh, obtaining... Uh, filthy lucre you know what i mean riches by by uh by going off and committing transgression right you know so on, you know those things right so this is uh sirach ecclesiastes 2 and 3 cleave unto him the most high through his only begotten son and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end that's right so increase at thy last end in the times of what jacob's trouble right but also in the kingdom right increased at thy last end that the heavenly father may bestow that hedge of protection around you and those that pertain unto you right you and your household whether it be a, a believing a believing man wife and children believing what believing woman with a husband and children right you know you know those, those your faith could be the saving grace of, of those that pertain immediately unto you or i should say immediately pertain unto you to lock it it's also let me flip over to the book of saint matthew
you know, and this is very important to always remember, right? And, and just a quick little testimonial as well. You know, so earlier when I was first pulling up, right? You know, uh, Sister Tammy there was literally just like, probably about, you know, 100 feet away, if you will, from where I'm standing now, right? Where I parked my car, right? I had to walk over here. She was literally standing on the corner there, right? She was uh, what you'd be considered a, a transient or also known as homeless, right? What it would appear to be, right? Carrying a few luggage, suitcases and whatnot. She was out there, you know what I mean? Seemingly talking to herself, saying certain things, right? Uttering things very loud, you know what I mean? You could tell that, that she may have been, uh, you know, maybe had spirits on her, right? So in engaging with her in the conversation, right? Hey, you know, hey, as the scriptures say, man, don't be not forgetful to entertain strangers, right? Hey, what could, could have very well been, right? Lord knows, Lord only knows, right? But the point being, again, is also giving her the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, those who to pray to, those who to call on, right? And, and being what? Uh, uh, having that charity, agape, right? And being merciful, right? As the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are merciful unto us, right? That we may have that same, uh, you know, uh, empathy and mercy toward our people, right? So just just really quick, just just uh, testimonial of the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? That she was, you know, some may have seen that and may have thought maybe she's not in her right mind, right? And maybe maybe that is the case. However, during our conversation, right? We, uh, you know, what I mean, and of course, not long after we began our conversation, I started the live, right? Just so I can capture it on on camera, right? Because it was very, uh, you know, we spoke for over half an hour, right? So the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for manifesting that power. Right, so I just wanted to give that quick testimonial of the of the power of the word. Right, so again, man, someone who may have been off, or you know what I mean, shouting things, whatnot, it may be chat spirits on her. Hey, well, she came across the word. She looked at the chart and started conversating. And hey, yeah, the Lord does it. The Lord, the Lord does all that, man. So the Wadi Abashim Yahweh Shai. Right. Now let me slide back to Saint Matthew chapter five and verse ten, where it's this red letter, Mashiach Yahweh Shai speaking. Right. And uh, oh, and then let me grab this real quick. Woo! Oh, Tahawam Lab. Little like you got the flamethrower on right now, bro. Yesterday was Mayaka Allah, man. All these brothers, as well as other brothers, posted preset. Yeah, the St. Luke chapter 5, verse 31, from Brother Tahawam Lab. And Yahweh Shai answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. That's right, man. So our people need healing, right? Our people need to hear the, the lowly, right? That is who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has respect unto, says the scriptures, right? And, and in respect of, right? So again, the lowly, right? The meek, the humble. And we are out here to do what? Call sinners to repentance, right? And so again, that's what we we're speaking of, right? The, the kingdom of heaven being established, right? The names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true names of the heavenly father and his only begotten son in the Pele Hebrew tongue. You know, Shor Las Nunas, Tekalog Stone. You know, so in, in those types of things, talk about you know, the, 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 the slavery, the different forms of slavery and, and, and areas of the world where people are scattered. So the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that, man. I have beautiful precept and the water for that. In fact, here, let me uh, go ahead and, and pass out. Yeah, yeah, let me go ahead and pass out some wrenches. Make sure I get you, make sure I get you brother some wrenches. All right, all right. And the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and let me go ahead and, uh, I don't know if the brother you're with is out still on, I'm gonna add, add you as a moderator, brother. And, it's locked, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing it all in one shot right here real quick. Yep, yep, just doing it all in one quick shot, man. It's locked, yeah, for the, for the hold up. All right, the other brothers, hey, I don't know if this out, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some more wrenches, whoever posted up. Hey, shalom, shalom, y'all bashi me on brakata. To the brother Ashraka, Israelite 144. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, so, yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> yeah, bro. So, I got you, bro, I got you. Yeah, so now, now, Eden clipped my other channel. I was actually on my uh, backup channel earlier and I was watching some videos and, and going, you know, doing some comments, you know what I mean, responding to some comments and stuff. Now, nah, man, the water y'all bashi me on shot. Ian got me recently, but. You know, hey, you always got to stay prepared. Always got to stay ready for that, right? But, uh, you know, I, I rarely go live on this channel. So, hey, I just figured, why not, right? Let's do it. Now, going back to St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Now, it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's right, man. So, you, for righteousness' sake, we're going to suffer for the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? We are, yeah, yeah, kind. They be searching. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, yeah, that's why I kept, you know, keep keep it rolling on the backup channel for sure, bro. I don't know if it's I, Lord will. 
Now, continue, again, persecuted for righteousness' sake, again, for the holy names of Yahweh Hashem Yoshai, and for defending the gospel, the law, statutes, and commandments, and, and speaking against wickedness, right? Verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. That's right, for your sake, for what? Defending the gospel, right? Hey, I know many brothers and sisters that have also suffered that, you know what I mean? Hey, Brother Tahu Amlab, I know you can speak to that, you know, and very recently, you know what I mean? The things that, that you have endured, but Yahweh Shim Shai is ultimately going to set up, right? As we read in Sirach, the second chapter, right? To be increased at that last end, right? In the latter end, man, that's what Yahweh Shim Shai is going to do, man. He's going to put you through those things, put you through the ringer, the furnace of affliction, the fur furnace of adversity for your betterment, right? This is five, uh, Matt, St. Matthew 5 and 12. That says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. That's right, man. So again, a fourth time. Shalom, shalom. Hey, that's the spirit. Hey, can't, can't make that up. Can't make it up. Hey, signs and tokens following, man. Hey, but why do y'all me on shot? Right? So that's why we're out here, right? You know, hey, hey, again, man, they persecuted the prophets of old, man. Maybe if, if that's us going back to the ancient world, Lord's will. Right? This is uh, Brother Tahuam Lab, Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. That's right. So again, we are to obey the Most High rather than men, right? Set things up. You know, oh, that's that doesn't seem godly. Oh, that's not a God I want to serve. Or, you know, I believe in God, but I don't agree with that of the Bible, right? You know, so at the end of the day, we're to obey the Most High rather than men. So all these, you know, uh, you know, things that are social constructs, you know, if you will, right? Certain things that are approved of in the sight of men, right? You can be anything you want to be this quote unquote pride month, right? All this other BS, right? That is promoted within this wicked ass society, right? We're going to speak against that. So be it, right? And we're going to be, well, hey, what are about Shimei Shai for putting that spirit on us, right? To, to you know, that warlike energy, man. Dash, man, right? The Holy Spirit, right? Okay, to, to be able to, to speak against those things, but also to do what? Know what it is. Already be prepared, right? For, for what we may suffer. Right? But we're not going to suffer as our Lord and Savior did. Right? So that is a, is a great honor to be able to do so in the name of Yahweh Shem Yoshai. Acts 5 and 30 says, The Most High of our, of our powers, of the power of our fathers, raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. That's right, man. So he raised them up, right? And the power of our fathers. But again, our people did wickedly against, uh, as we referenced, right? Okay? Uh, in, in, the, in the other reading earlier, right? Speaking against the, the wickedness of, of the Jews and those who are coming up against Yahweh Shai, the prophets of old, right? The, 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 those that were killing the prophets and the righteous, right? You know, so again, man, we have we have to be prepared, fortified in, in, the, in the mind and spirit, right? In fact, here, let's grab this and slide over to the book of 1 Peter, all right? Let's probably already know where we're going with it, right? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter four and start at verse 12. Now it says, beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, right? So don't think, oh, why me? This always happens to me. Why is this happening to me, right? Don't think of it as a strange thing. Verse 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Mashiach's sufferings, right? So rejoice in those things, man. You're going to suffer as a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai did, the only begotten son of the Holy Father. It says that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's right, so when that glory is going to be revealed, Lord's will would be of that number to be a joint heir in the kingdom of heaven, right? You know, we, hey, we're going to be exceedingly joyful, right? Then there's going to be an abundance of that, man, over the top. It's going to be overflowing, man, right? Verse 14, it says, If ye be reproached for the name of Mashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. That's right. So we're going to glorify Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? Fourth time, them, them trying to come up against Yahweh Shai, saying, oh, he's, he's performing these miracles by the power of Bezelbub. Right? You know what I mean? He's calling on, on demons and, and evil entities to, to do those miracles, perform those things. They try to, you know, come in again, uh, try to defame and, and try to uh, you know, say he wasn't the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. Right? You know, those types of things, there was uh, just sheer wickedness, man. Verse 15, 
let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, I'll say it verbatim, right? So the term Christian is really mean going back to followers of Mashiach, right? It says, let him be not ashamed, but let him glorify the Most High on his be on this behalf, right? So the water Yabashim Yashai for bringing upon these things, right? For allowing us to endure all those things that we that we are to be, uh, you know what I mean? To endure Lord's will, man, right? This is the book of Sirach, uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 18 from the brother Ariel. It says, uh, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Woo! Sorry, man. Hey, you brothers got the flamethrowers tonight, man. Hey, I'm going to repeat that again. Sounds so nice. You got to say it twice. Shout out, uh, Malak Laab. Sirach, Ecclesiastes 2 and 18. So it's saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. That's right, man. So again, so is his mercy. Yeah, the, 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 oh, okay, okay, it's like it. Yeah, let's, let's uh, flip that back. Let's back it up. Beep, beep. Uh, Ecclesiastes, Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did any ever trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Those are rhetorical questions. Never did happen, right? Never has taken place. So again, yep, yep, the water for that, brother. Exactly, man. And shalom to the beloved brother, but not. Nah, killer treasure, 12 traps. To the household, beloved. All right, out here with me through the spirit. All right. Right? Absolutely. So again, we are to endure these things, right? But it is all a test, a trial of our faith, right? So now let's slide back to uh, 2 Thessalonians, right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. That's right, man. James Brown, the big payback, right? That's coming to Esau of Edom and all these other heathen nations that are upon the face of the earth, right? That's taking place now, right? The curse is befalling our enemies pursuant to, I believe it's Deuteronomy 30 and 7, right? And, and all the other things that are taking place across the four winds of the earth, right? Yahbashim Yahshua is manifesting he's, he's, those judgments right now, right? And he's going to continuously do so, right? During this time and while the kingdom is established, right? So again, that is a what? A righteous thing, right? Back here, let's grab this out of uh, Romans. Grab this out of Romans, Salakia, one moment. Let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans 12 and 19. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith Adawanya, how will the Lord? Right, so it is what? A righteous thing for the Lord to recompense, man. So ultimately, yeah, all the things that have taken place over the course of the different forms of uh, different times of slavery and all the uh, affliction and, and everything, man, our people, man, everything that we've ever suffered and endured, going back to the ancient world, going back to, you know what I mean? Uh, as far back as, as, as the Al-Bashim al Shai has brought forth that chastisement, that judgment, there's going to be a mighty recompense, man. There's going to be a mighty recompense for that, right? Yep, this is the brother Shalom, uh, brother Ariyah, servants of the throne. Yabashim Yashai Barakata, Wabrakatam to you and your household beloved. And uh just passed along the wrench, you know. And uh yeah man. Let me grab this. Hey, that's the spirit. Uh let me let me first let me grab this from Brother Tahuam Lab. This is uh Psalm 34 19. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but Adawanya, how the Lord delivereth him out of them all. That's right. Woo! That's right, man. So again, he's gonna deliver out of them all. Many again, manifold temptations, right? Many different types, diverse types. Okay, the Heavenly Father can, can bring forth that chastisement, okay, in many different forms. But again, he, many are the afflictions of the righteous, right? Okay, the righteous are going to suffer. You shall suffer. Yeah, he's going to deliver you. He's going to make that way. And ultimately, hey, Lord's will, we be of that number, right? Because that is what it's for, man, to try our faith and prove ourselves, right? Worthy of what's to come, right? And uh, let's go ahead and... and uh, yeah, man. Hey, Tawam Lab. Yeah, that's the spirit, huh? Because I actually was going to flip right at that. I right, literally, I was about to flip. Flip right to Deuteronomy 32. Hey, call Allah, y'all bashim y'all shah, man. That's the spirit working, brother. Yep. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. 
Now again, in reference, you know, hey, hey, I referenced that too as well. When that woman before, right before I hit the live, she was talking about having, you know, empathy and whatnot uh, towards the, what's taking place in the, with the conflict between the Israelis and the quote unquote Palestinians, right? So I mentioned, I said, hey, it's the Lord's will, right? You know, I say, hey, so let, let's start here at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. I'll start up a little bit. The water, brother. Now let's get this. It says, uh, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Time man, so none can deliver. They can't deliver themselves. They can't ransom themselves by their way out of it, right? There's no gift. There's no bribe. Okay, there's no talking your way out of it. You know that so everything is sanctioned by your how about you know shy. Scriptures all say a uh, 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 foul doesn't drop from the air, lest the heavenly Father sanctions it, man. Right? Continuing on, Deuteronomy 32 and 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and I say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, right, and the term wet, W-H-E-T, I believe, yeah, it goes into sharpen, right? So it says, I wet my glittering sword, that means to sharpen that sword, right? Hey, hey, shout out to the brother Yehuda, when the prophet's on the scene, judgment comes in between, right? And you already know, yeah, brother uh, put out that lesson earlier too, man, that was the Yapa lesson, right? And that's the spirit, man, because again, man, hey, I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Right? Deuteronomy 32, 39. Right? I'll let this pass real quick. So yeah, man. So the Heavenly Father is going to deliver the righteous man out of all these afflictions, man. Yeah, and we're, we're approaching that. We're approaching great, you know, very, very perilous times. Hey, you saw that right now. The Heavenly Father manifested what? I believe it was four shootouts, massive shootouts this weekend. There was something like 48 people got hit, right? Several deleted, right? You name it, man. The Heavenly Father, uh, was it a recent landslide, uh, uh, Papua New Guinea, right? Several hundred people killed, right? You know what I mean? So the Heavenly Father is visiting the earth, right? So what does the term visit mean? A visitation goes into a punishment, right? So the Heavenly Father is punishing the inhabitants of the earth, right? And many different forms and fashions, right? So the Wadi Yaba Shemel Shah for that. Now let's go back to a Shalom. That's the spirit. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 41. Again, if I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Right? And they hate him. They hate his, his people. They hate the Hebrew Israelites. They hate our people, man. They hate the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Right? And their, their quote-unquote actions, right, speak volumes of that. Right? Their disdain, their hatred for Jake, that perpetual hatred uh, uh, of Esau of Edom for, for Jacob, right? But that's all right, because you know what? Hey, we, we know what their la their latter end is going to be. And we're seeing their, their downfall now. Their fall from grace, right? Quote, unquote, right? Which they never were <laughs> graceful. They were never in the Lord's grace. But, you know, as the saying in the world goes, right? You know? Yeah, that's right. Not coming to give tea or coffee. That's right, man. <laughs> they, they ain't coming to hand out uh, coffee and donuts, you know? Uh, that's, it's a spirit, though, too, because I was telling that woman earlier, you know, that, that uh, Asherite woman. You know, speaking with her before the, the, the live went on. Say, hey, he ain't coming back with, with, with flowers and, and cupcakes, man. He ain't all love. No, he's coming back because he's, he's pissed. He got vengeance in his heart. Soon to Isaiah 63 and 4, right? Uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And all that the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Right, man? So again, our people, man, are taking uh, innocent man, if you will, right? Uh, you know, now again, there's there's that judgment, there's that chastisement because we went off disobedient, right? But nevertheless, yeah, the blood of the captives, as the scriptures also speak of, right? It says uh, they took our people captive and refused to let them go, right? That's why we're in a perpetual state of slavery now, and, and even more so when they're trying to establish this digital be uh, system, right? The RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast pursuant to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Right, they're man manifesting all the digital infrastructure. They're putting it all into place, right? And soon to be, they're they're gonna force that upon the people, right? So everything is gonna be digitalized, health documentations, health passports, car registrations, you know, digital currency, CBDCs, central bank digital currency. So it's, it's social credit scores, you name it, right? All those things are gonna, you know, and, and I don't know at this hour when they're closer to that taking place. 
because we're one day closer to the kingdom, right? Now let's slide over uh, back to, you know what, I think, uh, let me just grab one more verse off that Deuteronomy 32 and 43. Now it says, rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and unto his people. That's right, man. So again, our people, uh, the Hebrew Israelites, man, right, going to be led back to the Holy Land by way of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And it's going to be restored in righteousness, man. Let's go slide over back now to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Adawan Yahweh, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Salakia. That's, that's Adawan Yahweh Shai, Salakia, right? So I repeat that, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when Adawan Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, right? So rest with us in this word. Be comforted by this word, right? And again, and that revelation, the, the ultimate revealing, right? He's going to come back in, in the glory of, his, of the holy chariots, right? With the army of the holy angels, right? Let's also slide over now. Going to be revealed. Let's slide over to the book of Jude, which is one chapter. So, Jude, uh, chapter, uh, you know, again, one chapter, verse 14. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, Ha'arwan cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches with which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Sorry, man. So ungodly deeds, ungodly speaking, blasphemies, and, and, and uh, uh, slander and whatnot against Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, right? So again, he's going to come back with the host of his holy angels, right? And again, man, he ain't, as the brother mentioned, he ain't coming back to hand out tea and coffee, man. No, man, he's coming back to, to for, he's coming back to rule ass. We'll say that. <laughs> As, as I brought out earlier with that, that's just the Tammy, right? Psalm 110 and 1, right? You know what I mean? He's coming back to put everything under his, make it his footstool. All these other nations, right? The heathen, all these kingdoms, right? Everything is going to be subdued and, and be placed into subjection into the Hamashiach Yahweh our Lord and Savior, right? Through the powers of the Heavenly Father, right? Let me line up, uh, go back to this, but let me check the board real quick. We'll continue on. Yep, this is uh, Exodus 34 and 7 from Brother Ariel. It says, Keep me mercy for thousands for giving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Right? And, and again, man, hey, you know, I got to grab this. You know what I mean? I'll continue on and I'll grab another precept. Slack it. But now it says, Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Right? So that visitation, that punishment. Again, it goes back to what? Reincarnation, right? Reincarnation, because again, you come back every three or four generations. Your spirit goes back to the to the, uh, the realm of the Heavenly Father, the spiritual realm, right? And you come back through reincarnation every three to four generations per the Bible, right? That's a biblical teaching, right? And, and that's very spiritual, man, because that's something, again, I was speaking with the Asherah sister about as well, through re, uh, speaking of reincarnation. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, in your ancient, you, there's no remembrance of the former things. I was like, but those Palestinians, quote unquote, that you have so much sympathy for or empathy, right? Okay. Could very well have been the same people back in the ancient world who have, may have tortured you, put you into horrendous things in, in, in your captivity, right? So that's something that, you know what I mean? Kind of seemed, seemed to have blown her mind, seemingly blew her mind. It was like, oh, I, I never thought about that. Okay. But so uh, let me grab this out of the book of Nahum. Slacky, give me one moment. Yep, this is the Yep, yep, Nahum one and three. It says the Lord is slow to anger and great in power. And will not at all acquit the wicked. Right, man? So he ain't going to quit, man. There's no binding way out of this, right? 
there, there ain't no quitting, you know what I mean, as, as a acquittal, right? You know, going into the modern day term of it, right? You're, you know, acquitted of all charges, right? So no, nah, man, they're gonna have to pay them. They're gonna pay the piper. They're gonna pay that hefty bill that got built up. So again, Nahum 1 and 3, how to warn you, how will the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked? How to warn you, how will the Lord have this way in the whirlwind and in the storm and in the clouds are as dust of, in the clouds are the dust of his feet, right? Going back into what? The chariots, right? The tempest, the storm, right? That, that, that great fathership, right? Okay. How to warn you, how the Lord, right? Is that great power, right? The one true living power, right? So now let's slide back to, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8 it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High, and that obey not the gospel of Adawanawa, Yahawasha, Mashiach. Right? So, in that flaming fire, man, he's going to take that vengeance, right? Now again, that, that know not the Most High, and that obey not the gospel of Adawanawa, Yahawasha, Mashiach. Right? So, uh, living contrary to the word. Right? Living according to the flesh and fulfilling the lusts thereof. Right? You know, in fact, here, let's grab this out of uh, Isaiah. And again, man, that fire, right? It's going to come in the form of thermonuclear destruction, right? Hypersonic and thermonuclear ICBM missiles, man. Right? And that is something that the sister Tammy was, was uh, trying to, you know what I mean? Was, was trying to wrap her mind around as well. She's like, yeah, I can see that. Okay, yeah, I see that. So, hey, man, you know, Lord's will. She'll call on the names because she was asking about the names too. You know what I mean? Once I once I gave them to her and whatnot, she, she asked about them again. So, Lord's will, the Heavenly Father. Now, let's get back to the point. Now, as you see more and more, uh, you know, talk of, of nuclear arsenal being, being let off, right? You know, France is going to allow the Ukrainians to launch, reportedly, right, from Ukraine into uh, into Russia, right? You know, he talks of China and defend, uh, defending their sovereignty, if you will, quote unquote, right, over, uh, over the island of Taiwan. Right, so more and more talks of nuclear uh, missiles as well as Belarus, right? I don't know the Zion, Lord's will. I'll do a Gears of War lesson uh, if the Lord allows tomorrow. And, uh, you know, and there's a lot going on, but the Belarusians, right, are, who are, of course, very close allies and nuclear armed by Russia, okay, are, are saying that they're ready to, to launch. Basically, hey, if they get the go, if they get the green light, okay, if they get the word, then they're going to be able to launch, okay? They're going to go ahead and hit some, hit some targets with, with uh, nuclear missiles, right? So let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, oh, brother Gadja. Hey, Shalom, Malak. Ya Bashim Yasha Brakata. A Brakatam to you and your household, beloved. Yep, let's grab this out of uh, from Tahawam Lab. This is Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Uh, woo, that's right, man. So again, hey, they're being uncovered. The skirt's being lifted, right? Make bare the leg or uncover the thigh, make bare the leg, right? Babylon. Okay, the mother of harlots, right? AKA the mother of whores is being exposed, right? Every single day, the Heavenly Father is manifesting that sign, that token, right? And, and all these other nations, they have that disdain, that hatred towards America, right? So again, the Heavenly Father is gonna send back his only begotten son, not as a, a, a mere, uh, quote unquote, a mere mortal, right brothers, remember that? Yeah, not, a, not as a mere mortal, right? No, not in this flesh, right? No, he's coming back as that angelic being, that, that celestial body, man, the spiritual power. Right? Okay, it's gonna be manifested. That's how he's coming back. Now, let's let's slide back to uh, you know what I mean, what's to talk about this fire, right? Okay, and ultimately Babylon the Great gonna be made that lake of fire. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Right? Speaking of conventional warfare, right? You know, everything going back to uh wielding, you know, different uh, uh instruments of warfare to the modern day guns. Right, those those different types of, of conventional warfare, right? So it says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. That's right, man. So again, burning and fuel of fire, right? Major, major fire. Okay, and the tempest, the storm, it's also coming from the chariots, right? We concentrated fire coming from those chariots, right? Which the Bible speaks of, right? All right, let's, uh, I, uh, <laughs> you're not coming back as a crumb. <laughs> yeah, man, that's right, man. Hey, that's right, bro. Hey, we crumbs, man. We the crumbs right now, man. <laughs> that's right, man. Woo. Love, man. Hey, man. Woo. Hey, but you know what? What, what is that? You put those crumbs together. Hey, what does that crumb come from, right? The bread of life, right? As the scriptures speak of, right? That one bread, right? We are of that body, that one bread. Hey, I don't mind being a crumb. 
that's cool. I could be a crumb coming from, from that bread that is the body of a mashiach. Hey, the water y'all buy shimmy out shot for that, man. You can call me a crumb all day, right? <laughs> we'll see what the Heavenly Father brings down, right? We'll see how the Heavenly Father judges that at the end of the day, right? We'll leave it up to how out of one, right? We'll, we'll leave it up to the Lord, right? <laughs> yeah, let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 66, right? You know? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. For behold, I don't want you how the Lord will come with fire. And it's like it. And with this chariot, it's like a whirlwind. That's right, speaking of again, those uh those UAP, what the world calls UAPs, UFOs, right? Those are vessels of the holy angels, man. Right? Those are the chariots of the Lord, right? So to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will out of one year how the Lord plead with all flesh. That's right. So a sword can also be many different types of instruments of warfare and or judgment, destruction, right? Okay. So continue on, it says, and the slain of the Lord, out of one year how the Lord shall be many. That's right, man. So again, it's gonna be many, right? These are the heathen nations that are gonna get it. You know, uh, the two-thirds in Babylon, America, that, you know, that are gonna get it, right? Okay, so again, man, out of one, Yahweh, he's coming back to slay many, right? That's right. <laughs> God, God, that's right, brother. <laughs> let's, let's grab this out of uh, Exodus 23 and 29, Brother Ariel. It says, I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. That's right, man. Hey, so there was a campaign, right? Okay, that was taking place, right? Our forefather, Marsha, Moses, right? And then ultimately going to uh, Joshua and Caleb, right? So there was a campaign that the Heavenly Father had been leading through our forefathers, right? Okay, to, to drive out for us to be able to inherit that land, right? Uh, in the ancient world, what would be the become the Holy Land, right? So, so the point being is, is all those things, right? All these curses now, you, you, you fast forward that to this modern day, all these different conflicts and things being taken off are being manifested by the Lord. And then ultimately, all things will come again into uh, subjection to our Lord and Savior, right? So again, we're watching that progressively take place now. And then in an instant, as a thief in the night, Hamashiach Yahushai, man, hey, the Heavenly Father is just going to manifest the third wall, right? Uh, Jacob's trouble, the valley of Yahweh Shapai, all this conflict that's going to take place. And then ultimately, man, they're going to press the button. They're going to press the button. And all these hypersonic ICBMs, the arrows that the Bible speaks of, right, okay, are going to come at Babylon, uh, Babylon, America, right? Now, let's also go uh, slide over now to the book of Psalms, right? You know, and the Wadi Abashimi Al Shai for allowing me to come out here, you know, because I honestly didn't even expect to be out here this long or this late, but hey, man's going to the Lord. So, you know, this is the book of uh, Psalms chapter 11 and verse 5 try this i'll start here it says i don't want you how the lord trieth the righteous but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth wait a minute I thought god was all love right no the heavenly father hates people okay he hates those individuals man that love violence man who's known as the bloody man right whose gift was the sword esau of edom the self-proclaimed so-called white man that goes back to the lineage of esau of edom not according to appearance, right? But to the lineage of your father. Again, Numbers 1 and 18, right? So those who go back to Edom through the lineage of their father, right? They're going to go into captivity and then they're going to be eradicated from the kingdom of heaven. Point blank, period. Thus saith the Lord. That's the will of the heavenly father, right? Now, continuing on. And that also goes for what? Those of our own people that love that violence, that love that bloodshed, right? Have that continuous evil eye towards their brother, right? You know, going out and, and, and uh, you know, dumping, quote unquote, dumping on each other, right? All these different drive-bys and different forms of, of violence that are people, you know, the quote unquote, black on black, brown on brown, blah, 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 right? Everything that Esau's done, you know, facilitating through the prison systems, right? You know what I mean? Through, through quote unquote, rap music, rap culture, all this other, all this other BS and nonsense, right? To pair that up with, with the curses of Deuteronomy 28, right? Okay? Our people eat that up. Right, but again, they're gonna they're gonna catch that judgment, right? So uh, Psalm 11 and 6: Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. 
That's right, man. So that's going to be their portion, right? The indignation of the Lord. Indignation being righteous anger, right? So again, that fire, that tempest, man, that fire and brimstone, right, is how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in the ancient world, right? So that is ultimately going to be the same thing. Now, fast forward to the form of hypersonic and ICBM missiles. Now let's slide back to 2 Thessalonians. Now I won't be out here too much longer, but I hey, just, you know, it's all through the Spirit, you know what I mean? Whatever the Spirit wants. So this is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, who shall be speaking of the wicked, right? And I'll repeat 8 for, for context. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 8. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High, and that obey not the gospel of Adonawa, Yahawashah, Mashiach, again, our Lord. Now it says, Adonawa being our Lord. Now it says, uh, verse 9. Who shall be punished with the everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Woo! That's right, man. So again, man, you're going to get it. Okay, the everlasting destruction from what? His glorious power. The glorious power of, uh, of the Heavenly Father. Right? In fact, here, let's go back to... Uh, let's go back to Philippians. So back to Philippians chapter 3. Yep, I'll start here. Uh, Philippians 3 and 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensemble, right? Which is an example, right? For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Mashiach, whose end is destruction, whose power is their belly. Right, of course, and their flesh, right? Their own vain, their own vain thoughts and opinions, right? So it says, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, right? So our, again, as it continues on, verse 20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, Padawan, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, right? So our conversation is in heaven, right? We look forward to the heavenly things, the everlasting things that are to come of the kingdom, right? Okay, we, we, we pray for those things too. We hasten the day, right? We eagerly await the return of our Lord and Savior and the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven, right? But again, we have to patiently endure as well. There's balance to it, right? Verse 21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself, right? So everything, absolutely everything in creation going to be subject to Yamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? That includes other 17 heathen nations, and, and, and that includes uh, all of our people as well, the entirety of the biblical nation of Israel, right? And that's exactly how we want it, man. Hey, the water Yahweh Yahweh Shai for that, right? So now let's slide back over to uh, 2 Thessalonians. I'll check the board real quick, and I'll continue. All right. Okay, we're good. All right, so this is a uh, slide back slide here. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse ten, when speaking of Hamashiach Yahushai, where it says, "When he shall come to be glorified in his saints." Right? Who are the saints? The Hebrew Israelites, right? You know, pursuant to uh, Psalm chapter fifty, Psalm chapter one forty-eight, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, the saints are the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, right? Now, uh, I'm gonna repeat this. Uh, Second Thessalonians. 1 and 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day, right? So amongst the believers, right? That's who we are for, the fish for the remnant, the elect, that they may believe, that they may repent. What does the term repent mean? To come back to, to return to, right? To return to serving our power, right? And let's, let's go to the book of St. Matthew. Chapter 25. Yep. St. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, red letter. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep. From the goats, and he shall sh set the sheep on his right hand, 
But the goats on the left, right? And as I was mentioning to the sister Tammy, right? The right hand of righteousness, the left hand of, of wickedness, man. So, right? so the Heavenly Father is going to come separate the uh, Islakia. He's going to send back his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, to separate the, the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tares, right? So ultimately, it's, first, it's about the remnant, the elect, right? And then, of course, the rest, the two-thirds of the nation of Israel that shall be reborn in the kingdom of heaven, right? So again, in the throne of his glory, that's the way that... Uh, the Heavenly Father is setting it up for our Lord and Savior, right? And again, with this host of angels, right? So again, we, we refer back to uh, the book of Jude, right? We're back, uh, verses 14 through 15, right? In fact, here, let's, we'll go a slide over now to the book of St. John. Let's grab a reading from St. John, the 17th chapter. Up St. John chapter 17, verse 3, red letter, Amashiach Yahushai speaking. Now it says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true power, and, Mashiach, and Yahushai Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. Right? It says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Right? So he had done it in perfection, right? Never sinned in the flesh. And, and continued on to fulfill the work that the Heavenly Father had set him up to do, right? St. John 17 and 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Right? So, Mashiach Yahweh Shai receiving that power, that glory to glorify his Father. Right? So that's who we glorify. Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right? So again, man, the remnant, the elect, they're going to keep the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? They're gonna, and they're going to continuously call and pray on that and trust in the deliverance, man. Trust in their mercy. Right? Trust in salvation. Right? Because the victory is already won. Right? St. John 17 and verse 7. It says, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So, right, so all things are of the Heavenly Father, right? And also what? Hamashiach Yahushua, the first spirit ever created, right? I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's the book of Colossians. Forgive me if I am. I believe it says that by all things, uh, by him all things consist, right? I believe that's uh, in the book of Colossians, right? It says, by him all things consist, right? In fact, here, let me just pull that up through the spirit. Um, Yep. Yep. Woo, man. Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start here in uh, Colossians, the first chapter. Woo! Hey, the water y'all bashing y'all shop, you my brother. Hey, the water y'all bashing y'all shop, my man. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start up a little bit, just just because you know. Hey, just gotta get it, brother, through the spirit. So I'll start at Colossians just for context. Uh, Colossians 1 and 12, I'll start here. It says, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet, which again goes into fitting, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Hamashiach Yahushai, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, right? So again, uh, uh, What's that term? Uh, 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 Slaka, I'm forgetting the term. Uh, yeah, go, there's another term that goes into the forgiveness of sins, but off the top of my head, it escapes me, right? Uh, Slaka for that. But I'll continue on just for just, just so I can continue on with the lesson. Um, in verse Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible power the firstborn of every creature, right? So again, the first spirit ever created. Verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, right? So again, all things are gonna be subjected, right? In subjection to Yahweh Mashiach. 
verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Sorry, man. So the water y'all by Shimi all shy for that, right? So again, he is the firstborn of all creatures, all creation, that spirit. So the Heavenly Father had given him the full understanding, a full blessing of the Holy Spirit in the form of when he was uh, in the flesh as Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay, his final incarnation, if you will, right? And, and again, man, the, that was the power that the, the Lord had set up through his only begotten son. But again, the point being, man, is uh, by him all things consist, right? And the water y'all by Shimei Shai for that. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, let's grab this from the Baratham Lab, Proverbs 8 and 22. How to one Yahweh the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, woo, before his works of old. Woo! Beautiful, man. Beautiful precept. Absolutely, man. So again, Proverbs 8 22. How to one Yahweh the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. That's right, man. And verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. That's right, man. So again, hey, why do y'all uh, shimmy all shy for that, right? The first spirit ever created, okay, alongside what? With wisdom, the Holy Spirit, right? Verse, uh, this is Acts 17, verse 20, uh, seven, this is Acts 17 and 28, Brother Ariel. That says, for in him we live and, it's like it. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring, beautiful. Absolutely, man. So again, we're a hey, Lord's will. We be children. You know, what I mean, the, those children that will be the first fruits of the remnant, the elect, man, and receive the adoption of sons, as the scriptures say. Right. So again, man, hey, well, that's what we're seeking. That's what we're hoping and praying for. Right. Uh, this is Isaiah uh, 53 and 2, brother. It says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. Right. And that term comeliness, I believe that goes into beauty. Right, it says, and when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should. Yep, it says he is despised and rejected of men. Right, so again, man, yeah, they rejected it. As the scriptures all speak of uh, them rejecting the chief cornerstone, right? Okay. So again, uh, Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That's right, because all those, all the sorrow and grief that he had to endure in the, in the flesh is Hamashiach was shy. Right, all those things. Yet constantly remaining in the spirit, having that full dose, right? Okay, that full, his, you know what I mean? That that max of the Holy Spirit, just for a lack of better terms, right? So continuing on, it says, and we hid, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and was esteemed, and we esteemed him not, right? There was many that did not hold him and believe in him as a Mashiach, as the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, right? And but that was all set up, right? Because you know what I mean? He was the, the uh, uh, how should I say? If I, could, if I could use the term epitome, if you will, that rather the, the sum of, the sum of, uh, sum of that, that, that meekness, that humility, right? The, the prime example, right? To, to follow. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm going to repeat. Uh, no, we, no, we pretty much hit that. Let's, let's grab uh, St. John 17 and 9. I pray for them. Right? The believers, right? He prays for his remnant, his elect. Okay, this is again the words of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Right? For the remnant, the elect of the biblical nation of Israel. Yasharala. Right? Verse 10. And all mine are thine, and all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee. That's right. So he's sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father now. It says, Holy Father. Like I let this. Let this. It's like, yeah, it was, all of a sudden, a big rush of traffic came. It's like for that. St. John 17 and 10. All mine are thine, and all thine are. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. That's right, of the same mindset, right? Of the same understanding, of the same spirit, right? Okay, being one, right? So as the scriptures say, right, I, I and my Father are one on, this, on one accord, right? They are not the same entity, right? There is the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit, three separate entities, right? 
So I'm gonna check the board real quick and I'll wrap it up here through the spirit. Well, we yeah, gotta get back on, gotta get back to the plantation and try to tackle a few things. We'll, we'll see if the Lord wills it. Yep, Con, all right, we good. Hey, so with that, you know what I mean? I wanna say that the water for the brothers to stop by and uh, brothers and sisters of the Akim and Aqua, the water Yabashim Yashai for you, Lord's will, this lesson may have been edifying, comforting, and exhorting. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just, uh, my last few seconds here, just take care of a few things. But hey, keep fighting the good fight of faith. Hey, the water Yabashim Yashai, that light came on, right? So. Maybe that's a token. Maybe that's a sign. Hey, remain in the light. Keep fighting the good fight of faith, right? Uh, let your light so shine before men, right? Let your light so shine before men. All right, so good, good. All right, we're beautiful. Hey, so hey, the water yaba shimyo shai once again for allowing us to come into this marvelous light. All right, so with that, Lord's will, this lesson may have been edifying, comforting, and exhorting to the hopeful like remnant, the hopeful house of David, to the Akim and Aqua. All right, hey, man, I want to say yaba shimyo shai. Barakatam, wa barakim tam yad, which means blessings always upon you and your household. And if this is your heart, it may the blessing of election be upon you and your household. All right, so I'm already facing the east here, and I want to give all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Badash, Kaw Halalim La, Allah Hayat Nawa, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Waha, Raka, Badash. All right, honors be to the sincere elders of GMS as well as the like minded elders throughout Yashvala, Israel, and honors be to the brethren as well, laboring. And pushing forth this gospel, making your bodies a burnt offering, a living sacrifice, risking your lives and freedoms in the names of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai, to you all, say Shalom. Once again, Yahweh Bashim Yoshai, Rakatam, to you all, to the sincere hearted. All right, Shalom, Shalom. And, uh, you know, as always, I want to close out with the curse on Babylon America. A bot, a ball, DTA, so, Kram Yasharala. All right, Shalom. Till next time, Lord's will. I don't know what to say. Shalom.